We've got a test day at the track coming up this week in our new Cayman GT4. So uh, thanks to the guys at Renline, we're gonna adjust the suspension a little bit to suit. Now we've already got our alignment done based on what they've said on the internet. So negative uh, 1.8 degrees front, that's basically all you can get at kind of stock ride height uh, with stock shims and stock camber tops with the plate pushed all the way over to the top. I'll show you how to do that in a second. Uh, and then the sway bars, so these sway bars are adjustable. So they suggest on the 981 to go full hard in the rear and full soft in the front. So that'll, uh, so when you stiffen up the rear, it actually puts pressure on the front tires. So it often uh, cuts out understeer and things like that. So, um, so I haven't driven this on the track yet, barely driven it at all since we picked it up, but we'll go with their recommendations. Uh, and this is at stock ride height as well. So it's got a little bit of a rake to it. You can see there's some height in the back and then, well, if there was a tire on the front and on the ground, you'd see that there. So we're going to uh, tackle the sway bars first. And what we need to do that, I'll put, all some, I'll put some links in the description on to get some of these tools because you're gonna need them. Um, this is a T30 Torx. Uh, so what you're gonna do, all, you know, you, if you're working on European cars, you're gonna need a set. So you get a set of these and you get a, probably a set of E-Torx. And a, oh, where is it? Here it is. So a 16 mil socket or wrench. Now I actually have, this is called a pass-through socket, which is really cool. Um, now 16 mil is also 5 eighths of an inch, so you can use those. And what that is, I'll show you in a second how we set this up. Um, so you can put the, the Torx through it to hold, otherwise you'd be just using a 16 mil wrench, but not a hard job to do. Um, I just don't know if we're gonna have enough tension off here. I might have to get my small jack under the under the hub here and, and jack that up to get some pressure off it to, uh, be able to get the bolt out, but we'll have a look in a second. All right, we'll see if we can break it first. We might have to put a uh, breaker bar on here, but we'll try it with the wrench. Yep, and we're gonna have to get a breaker on that just to break it loose. Okay, breaker bar with a 16 on it. And we'll try to get an angle in here. Gonna have to probably go up. Now we'll put all the torque specs that we need. Oh, this is gonna to be too short. I'll put all the torque specs when we put it back together. I'll put all the torque specs when we put it back together back on, on the screen so you can see but this is pretty tor torqued on pretty good. Okay. There we go, just wanna break it. And we can get there, pass through. And you can see that it's spinning there, so. Now, there's a hole through it, like I said, and then we can put our torques in there to hold it. Okay. Now, if you've never had adjustable sway bars, the longer the bar, the softer it is. So if you shorten this up, it'll be on the stiffer setting. So we want to go into this hole on the end. And we're gonna have to, gonna have to get some pressure off it. So we'll have to put some, get the jack up under the arm here and, uh, and lift it a little bit. So I use a little rubber just a little rubber puck there, and that's just gonna be on the bottom of this here. It's gonna raise this up, and that will get the tension. It doesn't take them much. You see it move there, there we go. And we put it into this one here. A little bit too high to get that in. We'll back it off. And we'll do 
just be a sweet spot where there we go. That is now in the softest setting. Okay, we're gonna go have a look and see what our torque spec is on this, and then we'll crank it down. So torque spec on our old Boxster was 88 newton meters, and most of the torque specs I've looked up so far for this car are the same as our old one. So um, yeah, we'll just go with that, and we'll snug it up with our, we'll get it hand tight till it starts to spin. Okay, now that is not put as tight as we can go here. We'll get our torque wrench in. Keep an eye on it, make sure it's not spinning with the torque wrench, but it should be okay. There we go. That is your well, one side of the sway bar adjusted. And so all the other four, all three are the same. Um, and now, yeah, I'll show you how to adjust the camber on the top. Okay, to adjust the camber with what you got stock. Okay, you have shims on the arms, but I don't have any. So with what you got, you know, run with that. Uh, you can't hear, so I've just removed the tray cover here. Look, you pull up across the front and then pull it out, not hard. One, two, three on each side. They're a 13 mil nut. You want to loosen them off just a little bit so you can move it. Then with the car jacked up, um, you can just push it. Like I just pushed it with my, uh, into it with my leg and that was enough to get it over and then snug them back up. And then you torque them down to, uh, I think it's 30, uh, 33 or 35 Newton meters, but I think it's 35 Newton meters. Anyway, I'll put the correct spec on the screen. Um, yeah, and that's it. And then you've got your maximum cam camber, but you will need an alignment after that. So you go, that's going to mess up your alignment if you, uh, it's just your toe, but you want your toes, you know, probably changed a bit too. So that's it. And you can see where they were. See the witness marks there where they were kind of, you know, almost all the way over. So it was quite upright. Uh, and with that, uh, yeah, it was negative 1.8. So going to run a lot more. I mean, I see the GT4 RS guys running like 3.5 and then complaining that they still have a lot of camber uh, wear on their tires. So they're going like 3.6, 3.7. We will probably be going uh, definitely more camber. I've got some shims coming uh, and then we'll see how we go with that, whether we get camber tops. Because if you go too many shims, you throw out the caster, which is the wheel uh, going basically the angle of the strut uh, and it pushes the wheel forward in the wheel well and you get contact. So a lot of camber you can get from the caster, uh, a camber top, which will push it back, but not really screw up the camber or the caster by having that long arm. So whole nother video, but uh, that's how to do it quick if you just want to, you know, get ready for the track. So jack them up. Uh, there's jack points under there. I got a little rubber pad that goes on there and said, oh, you don't have to take the wheel off, leave the wheel on, loosen those off, push them and then uh, torque them down. Easy. Now there is another adjustment we can do. Uh, that's not too complicated and that is this guy um we can change the angle so we'll put it up a little bit there's only a couple one little setting it's basically a flat street setting and then a angled up for a track so a little bit more downforce so we might as well play with that what we're going to need we're going to need a t30 torque and another t30 torque to hold it because it's two nuts one on each side so i'll show you what those look like and we'll uh pull it out and have a little look-see so you've got a few, you've got four on each one. So you need to get into the nut side, the bolt side, and one is the hold side. And we'll do the back ones. So these are the up underneath, these are the two, front and rear. We're gonna undo the rear. I think we can just undo that one. Now there's also a little spacer washer, so get ready for that, because that might just, uh, Fall out. There we go.
Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna actually try to keep that in there so it doesn't, so it's, it's just a slot, okay? So keep the bolt in and just loosen it up. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna loosen up the other side now over there and then we're gonna hold it up while, while tightening one of them to lock it into place. So it's not a huge amount. See, that's the range you get up and down. But uh, every little bit changes stuff on these cars. So they're very, they're very sensitive little changes. So we'll put that in its highest position and we'll, uh, we'll hold it up with our shoulder, I think, and then snug one of these down. So what I did, I also un, I just loosened the front ones just to get, so it moves a little bit easier. So we'll get it at the highest and we'll tighten them all down. I don't have the Torx spec, but with this little tiny ratchet, you can't torque them down too hard. There, I got it cranked down and you can see there are the witness marks from where it was to where it is now. So it's a, yeah, a couple of mil up, probably about five millimeters. So that'll, that'll change things a little bit, I think. Should at probably ridiculously high speeds that I'll never reach on the tracks here, but that's, uh, that's what it does. So we're at max height in the back. Now there's one more aero thing you can do from factory on these, and you're supposed to do this when you do the rear wing, because it, apparently it improves front end downforce. Now you see where we've climbed underneath. Now there is a behind the wheel. So there's a groove here, and you'll feel a little flap, and then you can feel one, two, E30, screws and what you do remove those and then you've got more airflow coming through here and it's supposed to improve the front end downforce to match when the rear wing is adjusted too so we'll just remove those and take those little panels out so with the t25 same as these little ones that do the fender liners and stuff and you can see there that's the t25 you need to go in here and you can just feel it Too much, so there's just a little piece that they're kind of into. So we got one out, I think it's screwed into plastic. We'll maybe there's a little clip there, there's not much holding them in. Or do they go? There it is, and Now, they say you're not supposed to run on the road with the wing at maximum attack, which is hardly anything, or these things are moved, probably to do with the uh, increased downforce, reducing the emissions or something like that, but the, you know, your, your fuel consumption. But uh, yeah, we're gonna have these off and probably never put them back on again. So there we go. Oh yeah, you can see what they're kind of held in there with, which is not much at all. Okay, that's that front little arrow piece out. So that would normally just deflect wind down and now we're gonna get the wind, the air coming up. Yeah, much cleaner right in there. So do these come out, these clips? We might just, I think we might just, we could put those screws back in, I suppose, but don't wanna mess up the airflow. Yeah, so there you go. Do that on both sides. Now, I did just use a little flathead screwdriver, and I I popped those little things off. It was no big deal. The clips, and then I put them on the uh, plastic bits and put them in my little box of uh, car parts. So, uh, yeah, pretty amazing how you can adjust these cars to go from road use to track use in a couple minutes.